So, um, real quickly, I just want to let you know, because I refer to my kids occasionally while I'm talking. I have a daughter named Nicoletta, who's 19 and is a freshman at Texas Christian. I have a daughter, Gabriella, who's 17 and she's a junior at Santa Barbara High. And then I have a little boy who's eight and he's a second grader at Peabody. So when I refer to my son or my daughters, you'll know. And I just wanted you to know about the age gap. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, what was I thinking, right? <laughs> well, you know, when Lori asked me to speak, she didn't give me a topic. And I could have come as a professional and asked Gal, and we could have, I could have drawn from a number of topics. But what's really on my heart um, is to talk to you about being a mom and not as a professional, but just as a mom. And um, so what I want to start with is, is, how would you describe being a mom? Just throw out some words. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Rewarding. Tired. What was the last one? Tired. Tired. <laughs> yeah. Joyful. Oh, yeah. All those and many more that we could, I mean, the list is huge, isn't it? We wear so many hats. And um, we've been giving these precious children, and we love them deeply. And we want to be the best moms that we can be for them. But there is no manual for this. You know, I, I remember when I got pregnant, so I was so thankful. I'm sure you all have it, the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting. And it's like, okay, I'm in the third month. And you look, okay, this is normal. Okay, just relax. And then you have the baby, and there's what to expect your first year, right? And now do they have more than that? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> well, they only had up to the first year when I had kids. But, um, and, but I just remember thinking how calming it was to know that, okay, this is what's supposed to happen, or we're in the normal range, and this is, this is okay. Well, um, after that, I started looking, as the kids grow, I looked, started seeking out parenting books that dealt with specific issues, mostly behavioral issues, because that's kind of what you start to deal with when they get a little older. And um, um, I found a lot of books, and there's a lot of opinions on how to parent, what to parent, with the best way. And then I also saw, I looked towards the Bible to see what does the Bible tell me about parenting. And what I found is that there are really no exemplary families in the Bible. I mean, seriously, are there any that you would model after or envy? <laughs> there's brothers killing brothers. I mean, think about it. There's jealousy and envy and selling a brother to slavery, and there's all these things. But it what it comes down to is that they were imperfect families, just like ours. And um, they experienced all the many highs and lows of parenting, just as we do as moms. Well, as I, um, the other night as I was reading to Leighton the story of David and Goliath for the hundredth time, I re and I was preparing to talk, what came to my mind, or the question that came to my mind is, what was it about David's upbringing that allowed him at such a young age to confront that giant with five stones and a slingshot? We don't know. But I asked myself that question, what was it? There had to have been something. Or with Mary. What was it that allowed Mary to say to Gabriel the angel who came to her and said, you're going to be the mother of God's son? And she said, sure, basically, in her own words. So what was it about those, their, their, parent, you know, their home lives that enabled these um, young people to take on those challenges so willingly? And um, I know, I don't know, but I know that that's the kind of faith I would love for my kids to have. I'm sure, and so I don't think that you find that in parenting books. I don't think you find that in how-to manuals. Um, I think that they must have had parents who allowed God to work in their hearts to grow them spiritually. And I also believe that they had to have been parents who truly understood the character, the characters of God, and communicated them to their children. That's, that's all I can, I can, um, imagine. I mean, that's, you know, not knowing what their lives were like. Well, my parenting situation is somewhat unique that I have a, a huge span, and I oftentimes feel like I have my foot in two different worlds, one of teens and launching and the other in elementary school. And so I find the advantage of that is I feel like I can look forward and backwards at the same time. And I have found that to be helpful at times. And, um, and I guess through all my years of parenting, I, 
What I have concluded as a mom, and this is for me personally, it may not be what you find as moms, is that the two most important things that I can do as a mother are these. First is to allow God to grow me, wait, to allow God to grow me as he helps me grow my children. And second of all, to be a mother of prayer who prays, prays scripture over my children and claims the promises that are in the Bible in their lives. Now, I'm not going to talk about prayer because Cheryl Biederman, that's what she's going to talk about in a few weeks, but I want to talk about the first one um, and about how God grows us through parenting. And I, I truly believe this, and you, Renee and I were talking about this the other day, that God gave us, gave each one of us, the children we were supposed to have with their personalities and their issues and whatever it is. He gave us the children that we were supposed to have, and he, and he also knows that we are the perfect mom for those children because he, know, he just knows that. The flip side of that is God also knows what we need as moms, where we need to grow in our hearts. And I truly believe he gave us just the right children to create that growth and help him create that growth in us. So it's a two-way street. And as children, our children go through different circumstances, um, we oftentimes will experience circumstances that really don't make any sense to us. Why is my child going through this? I don't see the purpose of this and whatever. And I, I oftentimes think that, um, that, that those circumstances are not necessarily about their child. They're about us. They're about what God needs to teach us. And we have a choice. We can be open to allowing God work in our lives through our kids, or we can say, you know, I'm the adult now, and I've got this under control, and really only do the raising part of mothering. So I, I don't know. I find for myself it's a choice, and sometimes a choice I have to make often. Um, my biggest issue in parenting has always been trust. Um, God knew he needed to teach me how to trust. It does not come naturally for me for whatever reason. I'm sure there's a reason. Um, when my girls were young and I began to teach them about the loving character of God, it was, um, um, it was as if I was learning it anew myself. And I was laying a foundation for them, hopefully, and also laying a foundation for me and what I would need for what was ahead in my life. And so, um, hold on a second. Um, so God, through them, was teaching me how to trust. He was teaching me how to live open-handed with these precious gifts he had given me. And oftentimes I tried to hold too tightly or let fear creep in. And I have to say, sometimes to the point of extreme anxiety and even a few anxiety, full-blown anxiety attacks, that holding instead of, of living like this. And God knew God knew that I needed to learn to live open-handedly and to trust him. And um, he then gave me my third child, <laughs> which is exactly the child I needed. And, um, you know, I felt that, um, let's see. So I, I truly believe that God prepared me through my girls for my third child. And those of you who don't know, Leighton is eight. He um, um, any sense of control I thought I had in life, which we truly, really don't have that much, <laughs> as I'm sure you feel as moms, um, evaporated when Leighton was born. Um, he had health issues immediately when he was born. He has development is developmental issues, speech issues, learning issues, 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 all of them keep going. And with all of those, I needed to learn to live in the moment. And that's what God needed to teach me. And um, he knew that that's what I needed to learn from me that's what I needed to learn to parent Leighton. And through all of those circumstances and hardships, he, he taught me how to do that. So he was equipping me to be the mom Leighton needed to be. He was growing me. He had grown me through the other years, the earlier years of motherhood. And sometimes I fought that growth. But then he, um, and then at times, um, sorry, this is, and I, oh, and I just, at times, I fought that, to be honest. So, 
I'm off, I wonder if the parents of David and Mary must have parented that way. Did they allow their lives to be open to the work of, that God could do through their children? I truly believe they had to have been. You now, the other story in the Bible that really amazes me is the story of Abraham. Do you all know the story of Abraham and Isaac? Okay, we, have, we are moms. We love our kids. Can you imagine being asked what Abraham was asked to do, which is basically he waited all these years for this child that he finally received, and God said, you know what? I want you to sacrifice him, and he went up to that altar. I mean, and it was truly the example of parenting with open hands, saying, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I am trusting you. And I look at that story, and I just can't relate. But it is truly an example of a, man, a parent who trusted God with what he was allowing to happen in his child's life. And so that's kind of my challenge for you, to ask yourself, are you open to allowing God to work in your hearts as you raise your children? Are you go will you allow him to teach you as you go through different issues and circumstances with each one of your children? If so, what is it that God might be trying to teach you through motherhood? What is it that you might need to learn? I know I'm still learning. I will learn forever until I leave this earth. And how, by learning those things, how will it make you a better parent? Because I think it will. You know, one of the, I'm not really big on memorizing verses because I just am not very good at it, but the very first and one verse that, and I say it literally almost daily to myself, and I don't know where it comes from, Lori. I tried to call it, I <laughs> couldn't reach you last night. And it's, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who <laughs> confident, started a good work and we will, oh gosh, I'm blowing it, I say it every time. I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in me will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I believe that that can be really true in our role as mothers. And I claim that when I fail as a mother, which I do every day where I make mistakes and I blow it and I lose my temper, that God is at work in me and he is it, and he will continue that progress. Well, the other day I had a phone call from a really good friend of mine who's a really good mom, and she has a 17-year-old son who is just wanting to learn things the hard ways way and he is admitting to wanting to learn things the hard way and he's basically saying butt out I'm gonna do it the hard way so you just get ready for the ride and you know these parents the mom and the dad they're just going or the mom said to me what why with all his upbringing and his prayer and the training why why would he choose this and I really didn't have any advice to her but then this question that I had been mulling over came to me and I said Liz what is God trying to teach you through what Kevin is going through. She goes, oh my gosh, I never, it's just a whole kind of switch in your thinking. And you know what, I'm having coffee with her on Friday. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask her if she has the answer to that. And I'm sure she does, because I'm sure God is working in her life as a mom through this circumstance. So, anyway. Um, so those are my thoughts. I've been, I'm just thoughts I'm throwing out to you after 19 years of parenting. And um, I am better at trusting today than I was. Not great at it, but I'm getting there. And um, I want to give you a funny example. We took my daughter to TCU, which is in Fort Worth. We dropped her off, and I'm like, my, I'm sobbing. My 17-year-old is sobbing. The, my son is sobbing. We go, we're like five minutes from this school. We go to get on the freeway, and there's this huge billboard. And I don't remember exactly what it said, but it was something about the statistics of young girls that experience date rape. <laughs> I'm going, I mean, <laughs> or violence towards young women. It was, I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. It's like 30 feet by 10 feet. I wanted to turn that car around, go back, pack her up, and bring her back home. I mean, I'm serious. I'm serious. And God's just going, no, no. Well, we didn't. We kept driving. And, um, and I, I look back on that circumstance and the days before that, and I can honestly say with um, gratitude that as, I, as I've kind of launched a child, that every, a lot of things prior to that point prepared me for that moment. And um, God is so faithful and so worthy of our trust. 
And I could give you 20 things, 20 answered prayers that happened in the three days that we spent at TCU checking her in. Things that we had started praying for when she confirmed that that's where she would go. And God faithfully answered those prayers beyond our wildest dreams. And he is a God worthy. And that's another part of the lesson for me. Patty, I am worthy of your trust. And that was, I'm going, oh my gosh. Yes, you are faithful. You are trustworthy. So, as I say, I'm still learning in this area, and I'm sure each one of you have an area in your life that you know God is growing you in that is not your strength and that, um, and that you need growth in. And, um, and I'm sure probably like me, there's more than one. It's not my only area, that's for sure. But anyway, these are my thoughts, and um, I'm sure of one thing, God is faithful. And um, I hope you will find them encouraging in some way. And I put some questions on the table. Don't, you don't have to stick with them, but I thought that um, they might be helpful to kind of get you thinking in this way. And um, all I can say is that in everything I do as a mom, as long as I keep this perspective of to God be the glory, I don't need to know exactly why or how but I know that he is trustworthy and um, to him will be the glory somehow, maybe down the road. So anyway, thank you. Thank you